What's up everybody, it's Carl, aka Carl Drum Tech. I'm here right now at the top of a parking lot by the UC UFC. <laughs> And uh, it's a really cool background because you can see downtown LA just right behind me. And as you can see, the 110 freeway, one of the two major uh, freeways here in Southern California, uh, filled with traffic right now. <laughs> so what I want to talk about today is literally yesterday, like literally yesterday, I got in a car accident. So this is what happened, right? So I was on a major street. Um, the car in front of me had stopped. I had stopped in time. But now, I looked at my rear view mirror and immediately I saw, holy crap, this car is not going to be able to stop in time. I even tried to inch a little bit forward to try to see if I could avoid it because um, I had enough room in front of me to try to do that. But still, not enough time for the other person, bam, plows right into me. I plow into the person next to, in front of me who had stopped, who I had stopped for. Next thing you know, bam, another collision, right? And it's like a, a second car from behind hit the initial car that hit me, hit me again, and then I hit the first car in front of me again. Now, I guess you wouldn't call this a fender bender. I mean, it certainly there was significant damage for everybody, but everybody was fine. I'm okay. Um, you know, and there's definitely some damage in my car. I'm so kind of like uh, bummed out about that. But the most important thing is that nobody was hurt. So that's the most important thing, right? So, you know, we'll take care of insurance and all that stuff. And I have a $500 deductible I have to worry about. Whatever, okay? But what really got me thinking, and you know, I'll, I'll tell you guys how this all relates to drumming, all right? Because this is a drumming channel and stuff like that. So um, if you guys do like the drumming content and all this, like, you know, the way I like to spin it from a holistic life point of view that I like to uh, put these videos, if you're not subscribed yet, make sure you guys subscribe. Um, and then at the end of this video, if you guys enjoyed this video, if you guys got a lot of value out of it, make sure you hit that like button. Hit it right now. Maybe you just do me a favor for all these videos I put out there that's free, good information um, based on my experiences that hopefully will help you out. Um, so do me a favor if you got some value out of it, hit that like button right now. All right, cool. So here's the thing that I learned, right? So in that moment, in the act, during the accident, I was completely helpless, okay? So it's like, yeah, I tried to do my best to try to avoid a collision, but I couldn't avoid a collision. I couldn't escape because I didn't have enough space to try to drive off to the side. And, you know, considering there's also traffic going on on the other, on the other lane, right? So it's not like I can just easily escape. And there, I couldn't go to my right because it was a curb. So there's literally nothing I could do in that moment. I was completely helpless. So whatever was going to happen was going to happen. So, I mean, yes. It wasn't that serious of an accident, but it could have been, right? I mean, there are so many situations where you drive on these things called the freeway, where there are, there are so many things that could happen, and people have obviously died from being behind a wheel. I mean, in all, I'm sure you guys know people who have perished during some kind of motor accident. I know at least of a few myself, right? So it's very, it's not common, but it's certainly, uh, you know more people who died from a car accident than you did a, you know, like a plane crashing, right? So what I want to impart upon everybody today watching this video is that at any moment, like you can have that feeling of helplessness and you could just, and there's nothing you can do about it and you can literally just die, okay? In my accident, I didn't, in my accident, I didn't die, nobody died, but there are certainly many situations where people have died and it's like it was in, in, in like a split second they were, they were helpless and then they were gone, okay? This really ties into, you know, my recent videos, you know, with like the Broken City uh, percussion show this past year. Um, and also with all the stuff that I've been talking about, you know, ranting and raving, not ranting and raving, but really a uh, ranting um, about haters and things like that, about like, you know, like just uh, people hating on my videos, da, da, da. And, you know, I try to talk against it. Um, Really what it comes down to is, you know, in the grand scheme of things, in the grand scheme of life, where your life could literally end in a moment, like, all that stuff doesn't matter, right? Like, even in some ways, right, even drumming is not that big of a deal. Even, so all these negative feelings that you may have, doesn't matter. Um, all the haters that you could be getting, doesn't matter, right? Um, all the accolades you're trying to go for, doesn't matter. All your failures, doesn't matter, because at the end of the day, when you're faced with the possibility of you're completely helpless and your life could end, right? And I, I think most people don't take that uh, heavily enough that there is always that possibility that any time, any day, you know, 
like tomorrow's not promised to us. You know, we could die at any moment. And we need to take, make sure that we're li living our life to the fullest every single day. And making sure we live a full life. And if it happens to be a short life, we need to make sure that we enjoy every single moment. And we did everything we could. We tried to aspire for our dreams and our goals as much as we could. Maybe we achieved some of them, maybe we failed some of them. But the most important thing is that we live fully our lives so that if the time does come where you know we're done, then we enjoyed it to, to work to the fullest. Does that make sense, right? So all the little bullshit doesn't matter, okay? We interrupt this video blog to bring you another drum lesson by yours truly, Carl Drum Tech. And this time we'll be covering the molar technique because somebody had asked me to break it down. Now, full, disclaim full disclaimer, I am not the best at the molar technique. I don't think I'm an expert in it, in it by any means. Um, I definitely looked it up at some point during my drumming career and saw it on YouTube and stuff like that and went, okay, cool, that's how it works. Now, I think I understand it enough to be able to break it down a little bit. And at the same time, you know, I think at the, I, I knew how to do it, um, you know, from a like a intuitive standpoint, all right? So let's break that down right now. So basically, um, the molar technique, the, the, the gist of it and the point of it is that you can play a lot of faster stuff for a longer period of time. For example, if you were to play a single, just straight up. After a while, if you try that, you're gonna get tired, okay? At some point, it's gonna start dropping off and you're like, ah, I can't do it anymore, okay? So the point of the bowler technique is just basically not allow you to keep going for a longer period of time by using a very efficient means of movement. So let me break that down for you, okay? So for example, okay? We can break down the single as like six tuplets. So the first three notes you're gonna bounce. On that third note, you're lifting up from the back end of the stick like this, okay? You're gonna whip it a little bit, all right? So that you can be prepared to bounce the next three notes. Okay, and then just try to work that, we'll get used to that movement, and then work it playing faster. Okay, same thing with the left. Now, you can do stuff like this. So let's relate it to the concept of rolls, right? It's not efficient to play rolls like this. Okay, you wouldn't be able to play fast, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to play long. But if you bounce it, right, you can play longer, you can play faster. So now, what we're doing is we're utilizing the bounce uh, to another extent, to another degree on these singles. Yes, we do want to bounce here, but each stroke takes its toll, okay? The molar technique allows you to do basically one stroke for six notes, basically. So most of the work is done by that first note. Because we're bouncing the rest, right? Okay, so now where this is also come in handy? Inverts, okay? It's not very efficient to just go, okay, to play it straight up, like, you know, lift up, lift down, you know, and all that stuff. It's, it's gonna be very hard for you to play it fast and very long, okay? So what you wanna do is, you wanna go like this. Okay, so right before the accident, you're gonna lift. Okay, because you have a tap, right, that goes right into an accident right away. So the most, efficient, the most effective way of getting that accent up in time is by, like I said, whipping it from the back, okay, and then just get that in there really quick. And now is what's gonna allow you to go fast. Okay, so it's kind of loosey-goosey. It's not the most, like, you know, like, clean in terms of, like, technique-wise and heights-wise, but it's gonna allow you to play faster, much more looser, and much more efficiently speaking of efficiently all right so um another question has been posed to me as far as like you know how do you have an efficient practice okay so having an efficient practice means that uh for example i just did a, a 30 day challenge and i asked people what is the one thing you want to work on i say one thing <laughs> And people throw off like, I want to get better at flams, I want to get better at singles, I want to get better at doubles, I want to get better at, you know, playing Diddy, I want to play get better, I want to be able to march blue doubles. 
Hold on one second, young man. Yeah! <laughs> or young girl, okay? So here's the thing. If you want to be efficient, you can't think like, I got to try to improve on every single thing. I got to try to be like, you know, blue level, level quality by tomorrow. It's not going to happen, okay? So in order for you to be efficient, right, you got to make sure that you just focus on one thing. Like, okay, today during this practice session, I'm just going to work on my flams. This next session, I'm just going to work on my left hand diddles. On this particular, um, you know, practice, I'm just going to work on my heights and so on and so forth. I mean, the most, the best groups in the world, right, even in the marching group that you're in right, you're in right now, I bet you there's a very high chance that you're not trying to work the entire show at every single rehearsal, like you're trying to hit every single point. That's not going to make for an efficient rehearsal. Oftentimes, right, you, when you go to rehearsal, you work on like, let's say, a, 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 you know, this small chunk over and over and over again. Okay, then maybe you'll do a bigger chunk. You'll just work on that chunk over and over again. And there's like maybe different emphasis of those chunks. Like, you know, okay, focus on the feet timing. Focus on, you know, front to back listening uh, responsibilities. Focus on the left hand diddle that comes in early. Whatever the case may be, there's always a focus. But if you're trying to fix every little thing during every single practice, you're not going to be efficient. So you have to be very specific in what in what you want to improve and just work on one or two things on each work practice because in, at the end of the day yeah you might think like okay i've only worked i've only improved on that one thing or that those two things that doesn't seem like a lot but if you add those up right every day like you work on one new thing that is going to add up rather than just like half casually working on everything at once right working on each thing a little bit it's not going to be very efficient for you, okay? So the most, so my number one tip for having a efficient practice, focus on one, one or two things, just have those improve, and then let it add on as you add more things to work on. Does that make sense? All right, so cool. Hope you guys enjoyed this longer video today, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. We now return you to your regularly programmed video blog. So I also, in my last video, I talked about how, you know, the privilege of working hard and suffering and putting in the work and, you know, like practicing when you're not motivated, all that stuff can be supplemented by the fact that the gift is in the act of doing it, right? Not the goal, not the rewards, right? It's the act of practicing, it's the act of struggling, it's the act of, you know, uh, doing the work that is the gift because you are alive to be able to experience it and to do it. What's the alternative? You're dead. You can't do it, right? So you might as well enjoy it. If you ever feel like you're lazy, if you ever feel like you don't feel like doing anything, if you ever feel like you're not pushing through your goals, just remember, you could die tomorrow and you may not have that chance to pursue those goals. So you might as well pursue them right now. Who knows, maybe, luckily, it all works out and you live a full life. Well, if you have that mentality, right, of every single day could be your last, and you push yourself every single day, guess what you could accomplish through that long life that you are lucky enough to have. Does that make sense, right? Does that sound good, okay? So if you ever need any kind of motivation or any like, you know, kind of mindset, shi mindset shift or a paradigm shift that can get you thinking about pursuing your goals even harder, that's the one, baby. It's the one that says you could die tomorrow, all right? So always remember that. Have that in your head and push through, push hard, and work hard to improve yourself every single day in your drumming, in your horn playing, in your guard tossing, whatever it is you aspire to do. Go do it. Go achieve it. I'm, I'm seriously pulling for you to do that, right? So make sure you do that. And uh, this is the inspiring word for you today. Okay, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. You guys, like I said, if you like this video, hit the like button. And uh, if you have any questions or comments or have something to add, make sure you add that in the comments below. Any suggestions on video topics you'd like for me to cover, make sure you leave that in the comments as well. And if you have not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the background, the scenery, the sights and sounds of downtown Los Angeles, California. And uh, it's a great place to live. I'm happy to be alive. I love it. I get to, I get to do things I love to do, put out these videos. And uh, yeah, man. So, and ladies. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. And uh, take care, all right?
Be safe. Drive safe.